Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Biggs. Now today, I'm gonna to take you on an adventure. You're gonna come with me as I go and explore a beautiful water system. This water system is part of the Rat River and can be found near the town of St. Malo, Manitoba, which is in southeastern Manitoba. And this water system is in the St. Malo Provincial Park, where they have dammed the Rat River and has created a large lake. You can explore the dam and the waterways that are around it, and this is an extremely healthy ecosystem. The plant life and the animal life is abundant. So I took my GoPro, and today we're going to take a look at this watershed from above and below the water. Hope you'll enjoy. Here's a nice northern pike just off the edge of the bank. I get underwater and I get up close and personal with a fair size one towards the very end of the video, so stay tuned. A sign of a nice healthy environment, bright clear water, lush plant growth. The diversity is incredible. Here we see the riverbank. The water has receded by about two feet in one week. But look at all the different nooks and crannies and hidey holes for the fish. The plant diversity here is incredible. We have some of the obvious character ones, the, 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 the hornwort, which is you know very, very plentiful in the slower backwater areas. We have some sort of milfoil, water milfoil of some type, and it grows very, very fast. Nice and feathery, looks reminiscent of things like kabamba and limnophilias. Got something else here that grows very, very weedy. And then we have different types of Sagittarius and stuff, and we've shown those in some of the other videos underwater. And then we also have it where it grows out of the, out of the water at the back there, and that's the one that they call arrowhead. It has those very characteristic sheep shaped leaves. Here's that Sagittaria with that very, very characteristic leaf shape. Now the water level has changed drastically. I was here just last week on Wednesday and today is Tuesday. So we're talking six days and the water level has changed by at least two feet. To show you evidence of that, as you can see here, is that this all this all this moss and plant life used to be underwater, but now it's just it's it's dried and it's just getting burnt. It's still being the water's very close to the surface there, but it's still being burnt off. And then you get these little tiny eddy-like pools that are slowly but surely being closed off from the rest of the river. And they create these little environments. Now I was in here playing already, trying to catch stuff and different plant selections. So that's why it's all murky, but it was clear at the beginning, and I can show you some video of that otherwise. But that it, within another couple of days. This will be completely dried off. The water level will have dropped again, and this will be dried off completely. And in this, like in areas like the Amazon and stuff, this little private little pool is just gonna dry up, dry up, and it'll be completely dry and desiccated within a couple of weeks. Anything that gets trapped in there will die. This is a view of the dam. The lake is above it. And at the lake, there's two large beaches, and it is a very popular swimming area. Now, granted, they may not allow motorized watercraft, so, you know, the petrols and things like that are kept out of the waterway. But with this being such a popular spot, the amount of sunscreen that comes off in the water here probably does have an environmental factor. There's a beautiful yellow perch. It's a pretty prevalent species here. The diversity of the amount of species of fish that are going to be in this video that we saw in this location astounded me. There's several different types of minnows and shiners and chubs, of which I don't know the names of most of them. Different types of pondweed. As you can see, the current is very, very strong here. 
That's that Eurasian milfoil. All these fast growing bunch plants are extremely excellent oxygenators for the environment. Not that it really needs it with the, the amount of uh, water coming over that spillway. Some more yellow perch hiding amongst the plant life. As you can see by the habitat, it's a sandy loamy bottom. It goes from coarse gravel and rock rubble to different weed beds in different areas where the river should turn. extremely fast flowing water. And you can see the sandy loamy bottom. The plants are just thriving. Now off to the side you often see these little pockets of different types of plant life. There's more hornwort, more Sagittaria. This is a Potamogeton. This is an invasive plant from Europe. Some more of the milfoil. All extremely important habitats for fish. Sagittaria beds. And it becomes a nursery for this spring's baby northern pikes. This is one that's probably about eight to 10 inches in size. And they are pretty abundant once you get behind into the sides and you see them amongst all the weeds. Normally they're very, very flighty, but I spent several hours in the water. And I shot over 200 videos, so I'm very thankful that I was able to get some good shots of them. But the one towards the end is absolutely the piece of the cake. The much larger pike that we got up close with. The minnows absolutely love swimming against the current in the fast water. They were everywhere. They would chase the camera down. And there's a nice little school of uh, fingerling perch. Here's a more closer view of the riverbank on one of the shaded sides with all the tree roots where the river is turned and eroded away the riverbank, the submerged wood, plant life, creates all sorts of shelter for all forms of aquatic life. A very, very healthy environment. Here's an Orconectes virilis the northern crayfish, very abundant in these waters as they hide amongst all the rock rubble. There's a very inquisitive, somewhat more sub-adult yellow perch, characteristic of those bright orange pelvic fins. The minnows love the current as it eddies over top of the, the large boulders in the stream. Take note of the rock rubble, the different types of substrate, the leaf litter, the twigs. If this doesn't inspire you for your home aquarium, I don't know what would. This is an Amploplites rupestris, also more commonly known as the rock bass. This one was a master angler. It was all of a foot. This is a, this is a sign of a very, very healthy river system. This is Moxostoma carinatum. This is the red horse sucker, and they will only be in good, clean water. 
this was truly a sight to see. This is about a 25, maybe 28 inch pike coming out of the Sagittaria. And it wasn't evading me quickly, but it was definitely a sight worthy of seeing. Now this is often, the, the, you know, I've been in this water all day today doing a bunch of video and everything for you guys. And you don't expect to see a crocodile here, but they're here. You just gotta be very, very careful. You don't wanna sneak up on them. If you do happen to see one in the wild, you just wanna leave it be, give it some space and observe nature. There it is. They're very well camouflaged in nature. Such a majestic creature. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thank you kindly for watching. Take care.